have known Shafi Dean Adeni Amu ever since I was a, let me use the word, seven years old. Shafi Dean and I attended the same primary school. We lived next door to each other. I mean next door to each other. We are number 13, Isale Agwede. They are number 15, Isale Agwede, which is next door to, to, to my parents and his parents. And we attended the same primary school. We were, we were registered into the same primary school in 19... I think we were six years old when we were registered into the primary school, which is Zumratu Islamia Primary School in Itakoni. When we were growing up, Shafi grew up with his father. His mother died very young. I think he was about uh, six years old when the mother died. He's been trained by the father. Uh, but one thing that I know Shafi, one thing that is particular to Shafi Dean is that uh, he hates being sent an errand. If you send him an errand, he will not go. He rather move to another place, either to his grandmother's house or to his grandfather's house for some time. Then he will later come back to his Agbede with his father. But virtually he grew up with his father. It was his father that trained him. We went to Zura to Islamia, where we both attended, and uh, Maruf Nawa, and uh, Muin Makonju, who is now the chairman of uh, this Aero company. From there, he proceeded to, he attended Methodist Boys High School, where he graduated in, uh, I cannot remember, but he completed his secondary school in Methodist Boys High School. Then he later traveled to United States. Before that of United States, he was given a scholarship to go and study in one of these uh, communist country, which was Russia, I think. It was my mother that gave him advice that instead of going to Russia, why didn't he go to America? When we got to, when we were about to pass to class five, then this is the show who was the man taking us physics. And he's a very terrible, tough man in physics and mathematics. So in those days, we normally have mass man physics. We always play like that. Mass man physics. We want to do mass man physics in the university. That is applied mass, uh, the other mass, and then physics. So that you can go and do your engineering at this university. So this Mr. Shuewu is a very, very terrible funny man. If he gives you 50 something percent and you come up with him to argue with him that uh, why can I give me this? I should get more than that. If, if you allow him to handle your paper and he check it again and he discovers that he had made a mistake, oh uh, my good God, you are going back to about 40 percent. <laughs> And he doesn't, he doesn't look back. It's just, it's just, when we remember him sometimes, we, we, we thank God for that. Because they really train us. They really, really, really prepare us for future endeavor. And that's what we are enjoying today. Shaf and I, we grew up together in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, my, our parents' houses were next door to each other in Lagos. I've known Shaf since I was uh, probably five years old. Shaf and I, we, we went uh, to high school together, we graduated together, and then we came to United States uh, in, in, in the early 70s. We were both uh, 21, 22 years old. We came to Chicago, and we have <laughs> we've not left since. So, as you have heard, Chef Dina Mu came to the U.S. joining his late brother after turning down a scholarship to study medicine in the Soviet Union. Being in Chicago was no joke. A young man that never wanted to run errands now had to fend for himself. He enrolled at UIC and Malcolm X College. He never had one job, but at least two at a time. He was a dishwasher, rubber mixer, jitney taxi driver on King Drive, mail sorter at the U.S. Postal Service, downtown Chicago. We never swayed from community activism. Please take a look at what others have to say. 
I'm Dr. Ewa Aiwa. I have been a, a friend and colleague of Professor Mo, even though they came here before me. Uh, he's my senior. Um, myself and Amuwa and the Nigerian community as a whole have been very, very instrumental in getting things done. Not only for Nigerians, but for the African immigrants, as well as the uh, African American community in Chicago and the state of Illinois as a whole. Um, in the 80s, we formed what you call the Nigerian National Alliance, for which Dr. Amuwa and other distinguished Nigerians like uh, uh, Dr. Akerele, uh, Oluopopo, uh, Charles uh, Morka, and the rest of them, Dr. Enye, uh, were very, very instrumental in getting things done. Uh, we were living as a community, as brothers and sisters from Nigeria, and at the time we had a focus on how to improve the livelihood of our people relatively. Um, through the instrumentality of the Nigerian National Alliance, we applied for and received the dual citizenship, which made every Nigerian overseas to become, to have a dual citizen of, a, of Nigeria as well as the United States. Uh, Dr. Amu himself was also the Vice President of the Nigerian American Forum, for which I'm the President. He has remained uh, uh, a made in the life president and hopefully he will continue to be president until he dies. That's true. Um, he has done a lot as a professor at the University of Illinois. As a true gifted Nigerian and someone who has solidarity for the nation. We were also very instrumental in forming what we call the United African Organization. This organization was uh, responsible for projecting the image of African immigrants in city government whereby they created the African, the, uh, what do you call it, the African, what do we call that thing, uh, they, through the United African Organization, we also have Commission on, Human, of, on African Affairs. That's the first thing that ever happened to Africans in this city. We had representatives in City Hall, and uh, before the mayor did anything that was concerning Africans, he was, uh, uh, we were very, very uh, assured that through that organization for which Dr. Amu was part of, uh, was given the credit that was necessary for uh, projecting the image and improvement of the social life of our people, politically, economically, and otherwise. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that uh, Dr. Amuo was also uh, very particular about. I hope that um, as we continue to celebrate his birthday, uh, those of our children who are coming up will look at what some of us have done and say, I think it's about time to emulate that and hopefully make sure that uh, from one generation to the other, things are left uncared for and we'll be able to improve on the thing that we do today and forever. When we came in, the very first thing is your school. we got to go to school. And some of us had to work too. So you can imagine going to school, working. So we are almost busy 24 hours a day. So one we have to wonder, do we really have fun? I guarantee you, an average Nigerian will always find a way to have fun. And we do have fun. We did have fun. We went to Paris and everything. But the unique thing about us having fun is a group of us, uh, myself, Dr. Shavidin Amuro, uh, late uh, uh, Isaac, uh, Jude Williams, late uh, Isaac Williams, uh, and maybe one or two other friends. What we did, in order to make more money, we actually gave parties. They call it sex these days. We gave parties. And what we do, we will rent the hotel. The, the hotel will get money from the drinks. We will get the door money. And that door money is what we use as part of sustaining ourselves. But we had a lot of time. We had a lot of friends. And back then, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff. 
Ah, uh, so we do that. We did that one, and we and that's how some of us had our American friends. People wonder how we established relationship with non-Nigerians. That is how we we started. That's part of it, and that is how we all got together. Very happy 70th birthday, old oh, man. I mean, we will catch up with you Sunday. Be, be, good luck. <laughs> Dr. Amuo, upon graduation, was admitted to UIC School of Public Health for an MPH. There, he met Dr. Harris, a practicing dentist, and Mr. James Dawkins, a healthcare administrator at the UIC Comprehensive Sickle Cell Center. Both Dr. Harris and Mr. Dawkins were also studying for the MPH degree. Following the completion of Master's in Public Health, he applied for PhD but was turned down. He went on to complete PhD elsewhere. And with the assistance of Mr. Dawkins, who not only hired him but provided avenues for him to collect data for his PhD in the area of sickle cell disease. Upon completing his PhD, he returned to UIC School of Public Health and was hired as assistant dean for students and alumni affairs. Later on, he got on faculty as assistant professor and in about five years became both associate professor and associate dean. That was like having two full-time jobs because he had to fulfill everything that being a faculty member required, such as academic advising, teaching and securing grant funding to conduct research. At the same time, he was fulfilling professional academic requirement of his job, such as recruitment, admission, and graduation of students. Remember, these were the same person that was denied entrance to PhD. So, he went to work to make sure that others would not have similar experience. He literally was working seven days a week. Dr. Amuo excelled in all of the areas, increased both master's and PhD admission and graduation by more than 200%, secured more funding than anyone at UIC with similar title, and secured the admission of first minority with PhD. This was an accomplishment that exceeded anyone else in the country over a period of 20 years. For the unprecedented devotion to students of color and his bringing millions of dollars to support students, he was recognized on the floor of the United States Congress by Congressman Danny K. Davis. It's a huge privilege for me to give this uh, video about doc on behalf of uh, Professor Shabdin Amuo. Professor Shabdin Amuo is one of the most compassionate, caring and thoughtful person I've ever met. He's everything to me and to many other people across the world, here in the United States, Nigeria and other countries of the world. He's like a father to me, a mentor, an uncle, and like one of my best friends as well. Now, when it comes to talking about uh, Professor Amuro, a first Nigeria Associate Emeritus Professor in the United States of America, I do not know where to begin. He is a very accomplished human being. Professor Amuro was one of the people that was <coughs> excuse me, instrumental to donation of uh, several million dollars of medical and hospital equipment by the Cook County Board to the government of Lagos State a few years ago. I'll tell you, these equipment contributed in no small way in significantly reducing the morbidity and mortality of our people in Lagos State. Like you know, Lagos State is one of the mega cities in the world with uh, close to almost 20 million people. Now, he also championed the donation of five container loads of reading glasses to the government of Lagos State, also several years ago. 
These uh, glasses were donated by Walgreen, which is one of the biggest international pharmaceutical company in the world. In the area of democracy, uh, Professor Amuo, Professor Shabdin Amuo, led um, at the Coalition of Democrats about two decades ago uh, in pressurizing the United States government to impose travel ban and travel ban and other economic sanctions on the government of um, the military ju uh, junta of Abracha. This also contributed in the uh, democracy that we're witnessing in Nigeria today. He has not been given a lot of credit for this, but I think he deserves a huge uh, credit in helping to champion the reemergence of democracy in Nigeria. His involvement in the Nigerian community is also phenomenal. Professor Muro is very involved in the community here in America. Is uh, there for everybody. The occasions that Professor Muro will get invited to multiple events, up to ten, sometimes on the weekend, he will make sure he shows up in all those events. He is a benevolent caring, giving, compassionate, and extremely accomplished individual. And more importantly, is a God-fearing man. I really wish you many more decades of healthy and prosperous life on the face of this planet. Happy birthday once again, our own Professor Emeritus Amuro. Thank you. We established this project called the Community-Based Infrastructure Development Project, which was looking at the issue of HIV and AIDS in South Africa. And what we were hoping to do is provide an experience for Professor Finiana so he would better understand how to work with people in his region. It took us maybe uh, a month, month and a half to actually write the grant because what we were doing is we were communicating with people in South Africa. We successfully uh, wrote a grant it's for a project called Universities in Solidarity for the Health of the Disadvantaged. They don't exist anymore. Uh, we got a small amount of money, and with that amount of money, we brought Professor Finiana to the city of Chicago. We also hosted him at the South African Consulate General in Chicago. A I've never been able to do that without the involvement of of Shafting. What's interesting about it, uh, I'm African American, Shafting is Nigerian, and the people we were working with were in South Africa. So it was an international uh, collaboration between people of the African diaspora, which is fantastic. In 1780, we started at the uh, School of Public Health. In fact, we are the second, I think we are the second set. At that time, the school, the classroom we were using is, is a convent, convent building, no air condition. You can see how, how, how hot it was. And let me tell you, we did the best we can. When we were in school, myself, Dr. Amuo, and our late good, good friend, Dr. Olowo Popo, who passed away. Uh, many years ago. We started a business called Solo International. Uh, what does Solo International do? Solo International, let me just tell you, it's a car wash business. <laughs> and this car wash business uh, is so funny because we call it the lost car wash. And we guarantee you that when we wash your car for you, six months, we guarantee you six months that you could, run, you could run the car through the car wash, it, could, it will rain on that car, the water will roll down. When we graduated from School of Public Health, um, we didn't have any money to buy this suit too at the graduation. No suit, we have no money, no suit. Because all the money, with the little money we're making, of course, we had to send ourselves to, uh, we had to pay our own way to through school. And this is good for some of those young men and women listening today, you know, who have your room, your TV, your car, everything. Listen to this, this is very important. 
When we graduate from the School of Public Health, me and Dr. Shaptin Amuwo, we have we did not have a suit to wear to our graduation. We went to this place called Smokey Joe on Hosted. I know you guys probably don't know where they call Smokey Joe. There is a clothing store. I don't even know if it's second hand or whatever it is. But you could buy one suit for one price. So we went there, we bought <laughs> We bought the, the suit that we wore to graduation. Now, the other thing that you guys probably don't know, a lot of you today, a lot of Nigerians that in this room today have a dual citizen. Dual citizen became in, in effect because of Dr. Olowo Popo, Dr. Alausa, Dr. Alausa, Dr. Amuwo, and myself fought to get that, pro, that program. It was, it was a big fight. He, the glasses to Nigeria. At that time, I don't know some of you in Nigeria, maybe you heard of what they call Jiggy Bola. Jiggy Bola because Bola Ashaju was the governor in Nigeria at that time. Not only was he the governor, he was a hard working governor that connected with all his friends outside the, in, in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, and we were able to help him to ship the glasses to Nigeria, and it become Jiki Bola because we want to help the, the Nigerian, especially the Lagos State people, to have these glasses. So it become Jiki Bola because Bola was the governor in Nigeria at that time. And Bola is a friend that we grew up together, we grew up to, with him here in Chicago. When he was in Chicago, I don't know, well, some of you might remember him. He has a little uh, brown, brown quadro coat with his tight booty that he, he wears sometimes. But don't, please, don't, don't, tell him, don't tell anybody I tell you. Dr. Shafton, Professor, uh, Pastor, Alaji, Amuo, the best, the best, and the best of luck and happy, happy, more active years ahead. My relationship with Dr. Muwo began when he and all his work to try and increase the number of African Americans and Africans and minorities that are involved in health professions. I applied and, you know, I qualified and, you know, I was admitted, you know, the first African American into the PhD program at the School of Public Health. And my focus was on violence prevention. They're refusing to allow me to complete my graduation requirement in defending my dissertation. And Dr. Bogando came on and cleared up everything and I finished. He's much more interested in minority communities becoming educated and being able to participate in decision making in the United States of America as well as in Nigeria. Um, we're talking about trying to bring in minority students into research. Because if we were to lay a claim to anything in America, minority students should be also at the forefront of research. We started the Center for Science Success at Harry Washington College, a college representing the city colleges of Chicago. We had blacks, Hispanics, and all kinds of minorities. Initially, you had a little bit of reluctance from city uh, from University of Illinois because they never thought junior college students could do research. But Dr. Moore had faith in these students, and so did I. And we proved them wrong. By the second year, we had more professors at UIC interested in training our students. By the third year, we were on our way. And Dr. Amuwo saw to this. We also took them to several conferences across America. He was also talking about starting another one on something else. Well, Dr. Mo, I'm sorry, I'm retired. I'm not retired. But anytime you're ready, I'm ready. 
because I don't know how this guy gets his energy. He just goes. And by the way, I was there also as a great honor to him, where he was honored as at the national level as professor of public health. I'm so proud of him. I'm so honored that I'm his friend. I'm so honored that he has some faith in me. I thank God for him. I wish you many, many years ahead. Happy birthday, young man. God bless. I worked for a period of time uh, with Dr. Amuwo at UIC, and actually prior to working with him, I was one of his students. I came from Nigeria, um, not knowing anyone, and um, many people at UIC for the period that I was there actually believed that I knew Dr. Amuwo well uh, ahead of my coming to UIC, which actually is incorrect. I met Dr. Amuwo when I came to UIC, and. Um, like he had done for so many other students, he virtually adopted me. And um, after getting to really know him and a lot of the things that he was doing, which actually focused more, uh, focused actually for the, for, the, for the most part on recruiting, uh, graduating, and actually supporting uh, minority students at the School of Public Health, I kind of saw uh, the reason uh, why um, a lot of the students I was very close to him, and um, I became very close to him too. I saw in him not someone uh, who was uh, doing a job, uh, but somebody who had a passion uh, for Dr. Amuwo, uh, recruiting, uh, supporting, and helping minority grad uh, students to actually graduate from the uh, UIC School of Public Health. Uh, was not a job. It was a passion. It was something that he was very passionate about. And I am actually very, very proud uh, to have known him, uh, to have been mentored by him, and to have been associated by him. And beyond the U.S. School of Public Health, Dr. Mo helped numerous students who could not be placed at UIC uh, to get admission into so many other schools. So uh, the U.S. School of Public Health is just a microcosm of the many things that uh, uh, Dr. Amuwo did that the very many students that he supported. He did not only support students for public health, he supported students for all the health professions. And when I was a student, um, my very first job that I got as a student was facilitated by Dr. Amuwo. My name is James Vaughn. I currently work at Sigma HealthSpring as an informatics senior specialist. And I came across Dr. Amuwo, I believe the year was 2005. Uh, this was around the time where they had the project getting the beds from Old Cut County and taking the beds back to Nigeria. And uh, I believe that was a very interesting project. I didn't really get to work on it, um, but I know a lot of people who did and it was touching for a lot of people as well. Uh, further went on uh, through my undergraduate career, uh, graduating from undergrad, I decided that I wanted to pursue public health. So uh, um, I actually applied to the School of Public Health and uh, you know, with talking to Dr. Muwo, God willing, you know, I was able to get in and actually start pursuing my career um, and getting my master's from the School of Public Health. I also worked as a research assistant for Dr. Muwo as a maternal child health study and that's where the relationship was able to actually grow. Um, I was able to get mentored, get career advice and also just be the best possible me I can be to make sure this project was successful. Uh, that grew into a relationship where I became the lead of research assistant on that project and went ahead to also, um, it also helped a lot of students who were kind of working their way through school, who were maybe looking at the field of public health, or just at a point in time where they just needed something extra to do for extra revenue. Um, so I was able to facilitate that with him and just kind of get to experience what an amazing individual that he is. He is truly a very selfless individual. He looks out for everyone. Um, for lack of a better word, I, I don't know if his kids understand this, but he's like a dad to a lot of people. Like he's the father of public health in my eyes. Um, a lot of students have passed through Dr. Moore's tutelage and I don't know if he believes or he knows how many people he has helped, how many lives he has touched. I know for certain, even me, a group of friends of mine, I know that where we are in life would not be as it would, 
it would not have been as a result of not coming into contact with him. Because in coming into contact with him, there's just a certain energy that you feel working with this man. And my career has grown, my career has taken off. We still talk from time to time and I get career advice from him and just things like that. And his biggest motto is always pay it forward. Always do the same things that I have done. And I've also tried as well to instill that in myself where if I see someone who needs help, I help them out. If it's someone who needs a job, I see the things that I can do because that's the philosophy that he has put forward. He has like, you are blessed to be a blessing. You are in positions to help others because someone helped you. And, and that's just one of the most amazing things about this man. And I just want to say that I hope his family knows and understands that there are many people pulling and rooting for him out there. He is more than an inspiration to many, 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 many of us. I've been asked to interview for my good friend, Dr. Shafti Namul. I'd like to wish him the best as he approaches his 100th birthday. It was somewhere close to that anyway. It seems like forever. Uh, I'm happy that he asked me to say some things on this occasion because we have a very uh, complex relationship. It started almost 20 years ago. We met on the battlefield because Shaftine is a consummate uh, advocate. But he's much better at providing ammunition than he is in being up there on the front lines because he's too nice. Uh, me, I'm quite the opposite. And he has fueled our advocacy and had so much to do with the development of the healthcare consortium over the years. Uh, we've worked on a number of different projects, but he's always been able to give me a sense of guidance as it related to how the healthcare system worked. But he helped us develop our relationship with the feds. Matter of fact, he uh, helped us understand the review process on grants because he is very sought after by grant givers all over the place. But I think our closest relationship comes from our relationship in Islam. And it brought us close as a family. I, I, I consider him to be a part of my family. And as a comrade on the battlefield and as a member of my family and as a brother in, in, in the dean, uh, I wish him nothing but the best. I met Dr. Shafuddin Amul uh, when we had the naming for his son Kwam. If I were to sum up his life, I would say service to others. That would serve, that would be the summary for me. Service to others. Because here's somebody who, whatever he does, especially in terms of his public life or even his teaching, he's always looking for ways by which he's benefiting his students and benefiting others. He created a position for me in the School of Public Health as a graduate assistant within the program that he's been, you know, uh, running for minorities to get them into public health, into health-related field. And that is not just me. He's done that for so many others that I know. As long as you come to Dr. Mu and you want to be able to find a way to start practicing here, this man will go out of his way and do everything he can to help this doctor who just came into this country to get his examination, to pass the board exam, and to be able to practice here. Uncountable people, we can't even say how many. For him to be single-handedly be the one who has brought more minorities in this country into the field of health, and I worked with him on some of these uh, programs, you know, designing brochures and others, bringing these students cutting across all areas of the minority community into the field of health, whether as doctors, as public health officials, going into the sciences. That's Dr. Amuo. Dr. Amuo, I don't think that there is enough that I can say about the man, the legend, and his legacy. I learned so much from you in regards to public health and why it's important. We. Oh my God, the number of students that we helped 
throughout the years, I don't even know if we can count them on one hand, the number of students that were admitted to the School of Public Health because you stood up for them, you fought for them to be there. And then once they were there, you uh, made sure that they had things like assistantships where they received tuition waivers and then they got a monthly stipend and you were able to connect them with mentors and develop a networking um, portfolio for them such that when they graduated they were able to go out into the world of public health and be phenomenal uh, public health professionals and so for that on their behalf I have to say thank you. I guess one of the most memorable moments for me was when the school was about to face budget cuts and you willingly retired such that your staff would have jobs. You were concerned about our livelihood and I will never forget that. I remember in 2007 specifically we had maybe I want to say it was 16 African American PhD students to graduate in one commencement ceremony and at that point I honestly felt like we had accomplished like the greatest thing ever because to see 16 African American students and I think there might have been four Latina students to walk across the stage as PhD students was just like the greatest feeling ever. Throughout his working life, Dr. Amul was always helping others while fighting for Nigeria. Let's hear for some more. Yes. All of us, there's, there's a word that says that uh, you go, you, when you migrate to London or US, yes. you want to come back to Nigeria. Yes. And during the military era, it was becoming impossible because you have instances where people just disappear because of their political view. And a uh, good example is uh, late Kudra Tabiola uh, advocating for uh, Obaba Rewan, Alfred Rewan, yes, just uh, many, many other people. So we got involved, and when uh, Chief M. Kabiola announced his uh, candidacy, we supported him. We, meaning uh, Dr. Amuwo, myself, and other people, not just one person. Yes. We supported him. Actually, although MQ was a billionaire in his own right, yes. but we felt that we have to contribute yes. to his uh, his uh, presidential um, campaign. We collected money about, I say maybe fifteen thousand dollars. We bought campaign material. We sent delegates to him. We made the choice that uh, we don't have. America is good. London is good. Yes. But we only have one home. Okay. You know, so Nigeria is our home. We cannot just say because we live in America or London and just a part of our country. We stood for what what we felt was right. If we don't sacrifice for our country, who are we going to sacrifice for? Right. If somebody is coming to vandalize my house, I will just say, oh, okay, uh, let him do whatever. No, Nigeria is my own. Nigeria is my country. Nigeria is my home. Yes. We put a lot of effort into fighting what we think as uh, uh, the military leadership in Nigeria, yes, we did. I am Ajuwaju Bola Hamid Tinobu, the former governor of Lagos, a politician, and in first place a, program, a, a, a product of a Chicago institution up to being a, a professional accountant uh, from here. Uh, therefore, I can say categorically from where we come from, Ita Agarawu and Lagos Island, till Chicago, back to Lagos, at home, that I can always and I will always respect my dear brother Savidin Amu. Today 
that is 70 year anniversary on the mother half. I thank God for you. I am grateful for how you have dedicated your life to our own upbringing. We look up to you from our childhood. I dearly remember our two mothers who had called the answers of God Almighty, how close they are and how concerned they've always been that we grew up and grew up well. Your mom and my mom, I will follow you all the way in the school days. How you guide us, how rascally I was then, and we look up to you. When you left Nigeria for America, we missed you. We were all determined that we will follow your full step. And we are around we arrived here in your arms. You were just very good, a guardian, a brother, a senior brother to all of us. A good ambassador of Lagos, the Yoruba and Nigeria as a country. You've been a great role model, highly patriotic, dedicated, and professional in all your calling. We thank you, and we thank God for you, for today that you are 70, and you are, you are still very healthy. We pray to God Almighty to continue to guide you, bless you, and increase you in wisdom, when I invited you to come back and serve Lagos State, the university, and you are very, very impactful. You've been so committed since the years we put you on the Senate Board of Lagos State University. You've contributed immensely. You've answered the call of your motherland to serve it once again. And you never, at any time, means a meeting, means a debate, you've impacted intellectually to those students, to the management. You brought America home to them. It's one thing for an individual to go through an institution. It is another thing for the institution to go through them and make a valuable contribution to the upliftment of their fellow human beings. You've been that great. You've contributed well. Thank God for you. Many happy returns. God bless you.